Welcome to Talking Giants presented by SeatGeek. I'm your host, Bobby Skinner, here with my co-host, Justin Pennick. And we're looking at, you guessed it, we've been doing this episode for a while now, 2025 free agency, which is also, Justin, it's kind of fun now that we've been doing this for a while. This is also, a, hey, we get to look back at our draft analysis episode and see which stuff we were right about, wrong about, and which guys we want to give a chance um, and we're going to talk about Darius Slayton reporting uh, to Giants OTAs, too. How are you? Yeah, it's crazy, Bobby. We're like, I-, I would say like the 2020 draft class is when I really started to get into it and take it a little bit more seriously and grind a little bit more. And seeing that some of these guys from this 2020 draft class are going to be free agents. Like I even like well, this I is a, the 2021 class. Well, I even like guys like Trey Benson. Uh, or they're they're gonna they're free agents this year, and I'm like, oh my god, like it, you're getting names wrong. Trey Benson was in this draft for running back out of Florida State. No, who am I thinking of then? Trey Sermon, running back out of Ohio State, Trey who Sermon. got drafted by the 49ers. That was the 2021. Draft I was right about yes. him. I didn't think he was that good. Yeah. So, but even seeing, I remember having like discussions, you know, and even seeing names like Trey Sermon, not Trey Benson. And being like, oh, my God, dude, you're telling me this guy isn't in his second year in the league <laughs> and he's going to be a free agent? So excited to talk about some of these cats. Yeah, and last year we identified Devin Singletary, Drew Locke. Barely. We kind of just mentioned Drew Locke. You want to know who the third player that ended up on the Giants that we identified last year? Was it Jordan Phillips? No. It's a quick hint. He actually is not on the Giants anymore. He was on the Giants and he got cut recently. I don't know. Daniel Jones, former teammate. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yes. D- Dion Jack. Jackson. Yes. Now Noah Gray is going to be a free agent. Uh, who? Noah Gray. I know. I thought about putting him on there just for the for the connection. And you know what? I'm, I I am going to put him on there. So when we get the tight ends, a little spoiler. Uh, but Justin Darius Slayton uh, reported two OTAs, right? So he only missed three of the OTA practices. I'm not sure if he forfeits his uh, three hundred fifty thousand dollar workout bonus. Duggan had tweeted, you know, something about it about a month ago. We're saying it was like a certain percentage he had to be at. And then Pat Leonard said, you know, something about where he had to be at like 100% of them. But also the team could excuse him and just give him that workout bonus as well now that he's there. I mean, we knew this was not ending for like a camp holdout. We very much like the question was, will he miss all of the OTAs? Is he willing to do all of that? But even then, just with Darius Slayton specifically, he's a wide receiver who has been in this system for two years, like he's, as long as he's doing the work on his own, he's not missing a ton from these OTA uh, sessions, right? So we are like, hey, go go try to get your money. But now that the Giants drafted Malik Neighbors, uh, the Giants, sh- I don't think, should try and work an extension right now. They should hope that Jalen Hyatt and work to uh, develop Jalen Hyatt and then see where they're at. Uh, but it is good to see him there. And I'm just going to say this. Nice guys can't hold out. Darius Slayton's a nice guy. He can't hold out. No, man. And he also doesn't make enough money to hold out either. No, 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 for, for sure he he really doesn't. But you also can't help but ignore the impact that he has. And this is a conversation that we've had for years, and we, we've we beat it over and over and over again about the impact that Darius Slayton has. And, and every year we want to say that this guy's going to step up, this guy's going to step up, Darius Slayton's the odd man out, Darius Slayton's the odd man out. And he just never is. Um, so I'm not going to hold my breath on that this year. If, if week one is tomorrow, I expect Darius Slayton to be wide receiver two in terms of targets, uh, or at least impact. Wandale would probably get more targets and receptions. But in terms of impact, I would say Darius Slayton would be number two, and he's your number two starting outside wide receiver opposite of Malik Neighbors. And again, if the season started and then kind of ended tomorrow too, I want I would want to extend Darius Slayton, because I think that is still a good football player to have. And especially if you look at some of the other wide receiver contracts that are happening in the NFL right now, I will take Darius Slayton's impact. Plus, I think he Giants could still get him for the cheap. We'll see what happens this year. But I want him to stay around. Yeah, and it, it, I think what his happens with the Giants long term doesn't really depend on him. It depends on Jalen Hyatt. How well does Jalen Hyatt uh, produce? Like, my dis- my opinion on extending Darius Slayton or not will come very early, right? Because you're either gonna you're either gonna see okay, Hyatt's close, Hyatt's there, or Hyatt's not there. Yep. And he's going to be someone who's just like this deep threat type of guy. And I'm br- and I'm bringing back Darius, and I'm and I'm working to bring back Darius Slayton. Now again, the contract could be something 
why like bigger than we think too right that that contract that he's on is currently a bargain contract but like you said it's the giants shouldn't be in a in a rush to try and extend and get something done because at some point you gotta develop the young guys that you have and then hey if you want to bring him back even if Jalen Hyde does develop I would look to try and bring back Slayton depending on what that contract looks like we even talked about it when he was a free agent the first time where we were expecting, oh my God, the the con the wide receivers. Look at how these wide receivers are getting paid, and then none of the wide receivers because I think yeah, a lot of them bottomed out that year. A lot of them were traded, so a lot of those wide receivers. Well, like who was the other wide good wide receiver that's a free agent that you hear like Devonte Parker for New, he there, went to like New There was somebody who was like above the rest, and he just didn't get the money that he was expecting. I'm gonna look that up right now while you talk. And I think you wound up pseudo reporting that the Falcons maybe offered him a little bit more money, but Darius Slayton wanted to stay here, liked what was happening in New York. So maybe that you'll know, be with the opportunity or with the lack of opportunity with Jalen Hyatt and Malik neighbors and Wando Robinson, all kind of taking away targets. Maybe Darius Slayton doesn't necessarily feel the same way. He also loves Daniel Jones. The giants aren't committed to Daniel Jones. And that's kind of the, re- one of the reasons why he stayed here and maybe took a pay cut. So I don't know the next year's situation could be, a lot different, but I'm not counting down the days until that happens. I'm still enjoying that the Giants have Darius Slayton on a very cost-effective contract, and Darius Slayton is there that will allow Malik Neighbors to develop, that will allow Jalen Hyatt to develop, and if they do develop, that's great, and if they don't, then he's still there and he's going to be reliable. It was Jacoby Myers who got a let three years, $33 million. Jacoby Myers. And you think of like what Nick, what Nico Collins just got the other day at twenty four million per year. Like the wide receiver contracts are back to being high again. Um, so like, and you see what Gabe Davis and Darnell Mooney got these, this past year. Like, we're lucky that Slayton hit uh, free agency in twenty twenty three instead of twenty twenty four. So yeah, like yeah, I I agree. Let's. I'm glad Slayton is there. We'll uh you know we'll, we'll figure out we'll figure this out as it goes. But the Giants shouldn't the Giants shouldn't be in a rush to like resolve. His, you know, his desire for a new contract. Yep. Also, just before we get into this 2025 free agency, we had freaking one whole day of me being like, hey, I'm going to be Dalton Risner guy. And Dalton Risner ends up getting signed. The di- Not even one whole day of that podcast being out. And then Dalton Risner signed with the Minnesota Vikings. So I'm, I'm putting it up to the people to find me a, a new free agent to just tweet at me incessantly. Like, what, what do you think about this guy? What do you think about this guy? Yep. And I will decide who that free agent is. Yep, yeah, tweet up, Bobby. Uh, let's uh, let's talk about 2025 free agency, Justin. And I texted you when I started to do my research for this, and I was like, "Oh my god, you know who we got to start off with, right?" And it was simple. We kind of have to talk about this because I think it's, I think it's real, and I think this guy ends up probably re-signing with the team that he's on, but that's just because I'm stubborn and it's hard for me to see this team letting him go. Right, like it, and, but the, all the signs point to this leading to some type of divorce or, or this just not working out. And that's the Dallas Cowboys starting quarterback Dak Prescott. That's Dakota Prescott right there. And with the thoughts of next year's quarterback class, where the thoughts of where the Giants may be draft wise, anyways, this could. Be an op- like this could be an option that this regime searches out if this guy hits unrestricted free agency, and Dak Prescott, right? And but now here's the thing: he's Justin, he's going to get paid, paid. Like you can't even look at the Kirk Cousins contract and compare it, right? He's five years younger than Kirk at the sign of the contract, and assumedly not going to be coming off an Achilles injury, so you can't really use that as a comp. Uh, Jared Goff at the same age just got fifty three million per year with three fourths of it guaranteed. Yep, I think that would be the minimum of a contract that Dak Prescott would get out on the open market. Yeah, I mean, I, dude, it, it may even clear. Joe Burrow was the highest in, in the NFL right now in 55 per year. I think it clears that. I do too, because I think other quarterbacks are going to get paid, and I, I think it will by this time next year. And again, unrestricted free agency, I do think it's going to clear that. Yeah, I think if he stays on the Cowboys, it may not clear. It may have to clear Goff. If he stays, oh, if he stays on the Cowboys, he's getting what Goff gets at the minimum. Yeah, so it, it may not clear Burrow, but uh, as an unrestricted free agent on the open market, because you're, you know, you may be bidding against somebody else, some other teams, Dallas Cowboys, etc. Yeah, you, know, you have to. I think you have to factor in the whole New York thing too. 
where sometimes these New York teams just have to pay a little bit more for these guys because of taxes and shit. So, yeah, I think I think it, he would be the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. Um, but where I, I go back to this, where the Cowboys, we've talked, we talk about this all the time on football today, like all all the time on our, on our football show, and I go, I keep going back to this. Even if the Dallas Cowboys are not thrilled with Dak Prescott as their quarterback right now, and even not thrilled from the standpoint of just can't win a big game, just can't win big games, and they really do have trouble with teams that have a record above 500. They kick the shit out of the bad teams, and Dak Prescott really puts up good numbers if you look at you know, the quarterback efficiency. I mean, he was second in MVP voting this year, and deservedly so. Yeah, if you look at quarterback efficiency for, from 2021 to 2023, he's third in the NFL. Um, and if you look at his CPOE, which is accuracy from 2001 to 2023, he's seventh in the NFL. So, that, I mean, it's been really good. It's been even better since the early part of his career. Um, like, he's gotten better as time has gone on. But I cannot buy to myself, even if Dallas is not thrilled with Dak, I can't buy to myself that with that roster that they have, that in 2025, they're going to pay Dak Prescott $40 million with a void year to not be on their roster. That is what I keep going back to. Here's the thing, though, man. It's starting. It's the signs are pointing to that. I know, right? And I should have looked up if he's able to be franchise tag too. Like it's so frustrating because if you look at this on paper, I would be on board for this. Like I think Dak is re- Dak is really good, but he just comes up so small in the most important moments, which again is not like great, like the best analysis. Right, like, but it's the truth. <laughs> but that shit does matter. As much as people want to say it's sports radio or dumb fan, like oh, he doesn't win the like it's 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 a it's not just like a coincidence, right? Where oh, hey man, it's, it's hard winning in the playoffs. No, he ha- he plays his worst in those moments. And if you're going to be paying someone at this age for that type of money, like I feel like it kind of matters. But I also like I would kind of welcome it too. Right to get that type of quarterback on this team, like he, he's like I said, he, he's really good. There's no debating that, right? We even did this conversation with Kurt Warner on football today, uh, this week talking about Dak. Like obviously, yes, is he the Mahomes, Josh Allen, you know, in that level? No, but he's right below that. And I don't know. And, and I mean, the Giants could make it work money wise, right? Like I just did some uh, stuff on the spot rack or the over the cap calculator where. You cut Waller post 6-1 this year. You cut DJ and Nacho. You restructure $8 million of Brian Burns' deal, which, again, is like minimum work. Then that puts you at $57 million of cap space next year with Darius Slayton and Jason Pinnock as your only like pending free agents that would get maybe more than the minimum on the open market. Yeah. So, again, it's frustrating because it, like I would, be, I would be like, hey, just go do it. Go do it. Get this quarterback and figure it out. But I do think that stuff matters. And – Putting this team in a cap situation with a guy who's not at the Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen level and doesn't come up well in the biggest moments and will be 30 years old. And the Giants roster is much worse than the Cowboys roster, too. Where, like, D- Dak has had every like everything perfect. Like, Hall of Famers on that offensive line where you have Zach Martin and Tyrone Smith, two future Hall of Famers, and even at one point had, you know, Travis Frederick for a couple years there, too. But that was under Garrett, and that was bad. Um, an all-world defense that has just forced turnover after turnover after yeah, turnover. Yeah, the defense with, is the difference maker with the great with the great pass rush there. So you know you can almost be like, oh well, you know, I, I guess the only but we've rebuttal, seen Dak play really well even when like those Dallas defenses were awful. Right, um, but I guess the only and, like, rebuttal. There was games the where it's like, man, you though, can't believe like they're scoring thirty-eight points yet they're still like two and four at the beginning of this season. You know, the year he broke his ankle. They were putting up freaking points, and it's just they were not winning games because that defense. Stuff. The thing with me it would be the offensive line, right? Like I think the receivers are like Malik Neighbors. Hopefully, can be you know at least you know near the CD Lamb level, and you know he's lived with not having the best twos and threes, but just functioning twos and threes, which the Giants should have. It, it, it would be the offensive line outside of Andrew Thomas. Yeah, it would be really the only rebuttal would be well, Brian Dable is an upgrade over Mike McCarthy as a play caller. Yes, yes. That that's the only that's the only well imagine you know, imagine you can't even say imagine what he could do with this guy, imagine what he could do with that, because everything in Dallas is better. 
ar- arguably, besides Brian Dable, and Brian Dable hasn't fully proven yet that he like deserves it. No matter how much I want to shit on Mike McCarthy. Well, Brian Dable, like, I think, is a better play call than Mike, but he's also not like Sean McVay type of you know guy. Like I think right. he's a really good offensive play caller, knows how to put guys in the right spots, but he's not like an innovator the way like a Sean McVay right. or. You know, Mike McDaniel. Mike but also, I don't want to, like, I, I think Mike McCarthy is not a great coach. But he's also not a bad coach. And I also, I don't think he's a terrible off. I don't think he's a bad offensive play caller either. Like, I, I don't. So. Yeah. But, like, again, I, I, I legitimately think there's a chance this guy hits free agency, right? And I don't want to compare it to Brady because that was a whole different situation. But I remember telling myself, like, they're not letting, Brady's not leaving, Brady's not leaving. People are like, yeah, oh, it's pointing towards that way and then it's like oh he actually left um and even even kirk to an extent a little bit too where it's like are they really gonna force kirk like push kirk out and maybe the injury helped push that along but we were having these same conversations with the vikings and kirk cousins last year um who again i think is like i think him and dak are very similar yeah. players here's like, the I think bottom line the exact same tier here's the bottom line if the giants show progress this year and similar to what we were talking about with NYG Daily and Weiss, if they find a way to win eight, nine games this year and their roster shows that it's starting to step up to the plate and that, hey, we can maybe go somewhere because this is also a tough schedule this year. This isn't a 2022 cookie cutter schedule. This is a tough schedule this year. And if you can win eight, nine games with that, then it's like, all right, well, let's let's entertain maybe a big swing. Because that's what these teams, that's what a lot of these teams do. The teams that have made these big swings at quarterback in the past, even the Falcons to an extent, right? They've shown that we have a roster that can do some good things and we have players that could do some good things at key positions and premium positions. That's what the Giants need to show this year. If they don't show it, then no Dak Prescott. You got to build it the right way. But if yep. but if you if you show that hey, we can take a little bit of a shortcut in this whole rebuild thing by taking a big swing like that because the rest of the roster is ready because that's what happens when you pay a lot of money. The rest of the roster is going to have to be sacrificed because you won't have the money to spend elsewhere and plug holes. That's that's what needs to happen to entertain Dak Prescott. Actually, let's get on the record. Let's say the Giants win seven games. They go seven and ten. Leak neighbors looks great. Hyatt looks like a solid wide receiver too. Nothing that's gonna you know blow you away. Wandale is Wandale. John Michael Schmitz improves. Eleanor is good at right tackle. The guard spots can be iffy. Would you sign Dak Prescott for fifty three mil? The Jar- the Jared Goff Jared Goff contract? Yes or no? No. I want to say yes so badly. No, I, I you know what I'm. Wh- the way I judge Dak Prescott really is by like how do you show up in the big moments, and I I hold that against him whenever we're talking about him on football today, and I'm and I'm gonna hold that against him here. I'm gonna say no too. I don't know. I don't want no damn Dallas Cowboys quarterback. All right, just another quarterbacks more realistic. Uh, Jacoby Brissett, right? He could be a bridge starter depending on if you draft someone, if you're not able to draft someone. Um, you know, after obviously Drake May is going to take over New England, and honestly, New England could bring down the demand for Jacoby Brissett because of how bad that team is offensively. And you're gonna like a quarterback will have to get a new contract from the Giants next off season, even if Daniel Jones lights the world because Drew Locke is a free agent. Uh, although maybe old Tommy Cutlets can be that Justin. Jameis would probably be like the best, just true backup out there that I like. I'm going to give you this list though, and you tell me which ones you like: Jimmy G, Darnold. James, Zach Wilson, I, I don't even know why I put that one on there. Trey Lance, uh, Taylor Heineke, Marcus Mariota, Jared Stidham, Justin Fields, Mac Jones, Mason Rudolph, Cooper Rush. Who are you picking? It's, it's going to be a, a four and a half to six million dollar contract. And you, you was Jacoby Brissett a part of that list or no? No, Brissett is your bridge is is part of the bridge starter list. I guess it would have to be Jameis. Yeah, which they, they, you know, they paid Drew Locke more than Jameis this offseason, though. Wow. Which I would have much rather had Jameis. And I, I've, I was part of the like, why are we pretending Jameis is good uh, people back in the day? But yeah, I would, I, I would probably, like, I, just going through that list, I'd probably go Jameis. I don't know. Josh I Dobbs is. I mean, I guess Justin too. Fields. 
yeah, J- Justin Fields would be just because, like, okay, that could, you know, you know, the whole meme, like, doesn't work, but could be fun to fix. Like, that's mm-hmm. at least what Justin Fields, like, you can talk yourself into be fun to trying to fix. The rest just sound kind of awful. I know Mason Rudolph had some success, but I don't, I don't buy into those last three games. So, but let's talk about the positions where they might actually, like, spend some big money. Uh, do you want to go offensive line first? Yeah, why not? There's some names out there, right? Like, and what stands out to me is the Chiefs. The Chiefs are going to need to pay for that amazing 2021 draft that they had, Justin. And then there's two guys that pop out, and that's Creed Humphrey, Creed Humphrey, and Trey Smith. You would think that Humphrey would be the priority for them to to lock that up. Uh, you know, at the center position, Creed Humphrey's just been better than Trey Smith, and that could lead Trey Smith as you know a little bit of expendable, especially with Joe Tooney on that roster. Ah. Uh, I like Trey Smith, right? Now, some of those numbers aren't great in his advantage, right? Like, he has a good amount of penalties, but he's a really good run blocker. He's been a solid pass blocker. Gives up a handful of pressures, right, that the top guys don't. And I I don't know what he would... It'd be interesting to see what Trey Smith would have gotten in this guard market this past year where guys were getting $20 per year. I don't think... I think he probably would have been in, like, the 13 to $15 million per year type of guy. But if they're looking uh, for a big-money guard... Trey Smith is the is the name that pops out at you. Yeah, I mean, if there's one position that I want the Giants to take a big swing at next year, it's it's the interior. I know we said that kind of this year, but if there's one guy where if they have the cap space, right, if Daniel Jones is going to come off the books, if there's going to be some other guys that comes off the books, where I'd be perfectly fine with giving a $50 million plus dollar contract to it is – it is the interior because I even think there's Sam Cosme from Washington is another guy um, who, you know, hey, he may not leave Washington. You want to protect Jaden Daniels, but if he's a guy that hits the open market, Trey Smith, like if we want to go crazy bananas like the Carolina Panthers do and just pay a bunch of money to interior guys this offseason, I'm, I'm for it 100%. Yeah, and, you know, because they can't draft it. Yeah, and, that's, and, and honestly, the NFL, like, even, like, some of these best guards, like, that hit free agency and stuff, you look at them, like, the first two years, they look like busts. And then year three, they end up, like, figuring it out and becoming guys that make this big money. You know, like Damian Lewis, right? Who was someone we, like, identified last year on this episode. Um, you know, Robert Hunt. Like, these guys, like, they look like busts and then they get there. So, it's like, I kind of like the idea of just spending money on guards and free agency, right? Make Maybe spend less draft capital on guards in the draft, even though I think if you identify someone, you should take them. Um, but, like, looking to fill that hole in free agency and not having that a hole that you need to fill in the draft because it just, for some reason, it takes guards longer. Um, Tevin Jenkins, Justin, who was mm. someone really, really liked coming out of the draft. Talk about him moving to guard, possibly. He's been awesome at guard, right? But it's just the injuries that worry you with him. Um, You know, he missed 11 games his rookie year, four in 2022, and then five last year, although one was for a concussion. But, like, you go watch him play in Chicago. He's been everything that he has. Like, he's been a good pass blocker as a guard. And then in the run game, he's just an ass kicker, right? Like, that strength, the the hand strength that has shown up. He's really good for them. He's just the, like, you worry about his health long term. So you'd see the money that he gets. You know, Aaron Banks from San Fran could be someone I see having a nice jump. We're talking about guards maybe taking a little time. Now yeah, he, I don't love him, he, though. He struggled for the 49ers, but he only gave, he gave up zero sacks. But if, if you're looking for someone in, like, the you know the 5 to $6 million range. Our old friend Will Hernandez, Justin, he's going to be 29. He's had similar numbers to some of the top guys. You know, paid like Kevin Dotson, Damian Lewis, Joe Thune, Isaac Samulo. And he's only getting four and a half million dollars from the Cardinals on his third straight one year deal. And um there's one other player, Justin, that and, and I actually think this could be someone the Giants look to trade for in camp as like a pick swap. And that's Robert Hainsey from the Bucks. I did a trade thing for Bleacher Report uh, you know, uh, a while ago, and he was a name that popped out there because he's he could be like a pick swap for cause this year for the Bucks because they drafted Barton. They yep. signed Ben Bredesen as well as drafting Cody Mock in the second round last year. And Haynes, who's been a starter at center the last two seasons, now looks like he may be a backup. He had a solid 2022, and then you know last year was you know kind of rough. You know, he, but he was still only he was still 18th in pass blocking efficiency for centers. Was six in 2022. Like that's someone that could give you either great depth at center, which was needed last season, or someone that could come in and compete at that starting job. Uh, you know, for like a you know 
fifth and a six or you know some type of pick swap with day three picks and expiring contract yeah even the colts have two guys ryan kelly's their center um who our guy dalton feely likes um and then even will will freeze will fries um he's the guard he played 98 percent of the snaps last year so there's going to be two linemen that are going to be two starting linemen that are going to be unrestricted free agents last year next year for those for those indianapolis colts as well bobby skinner yeah, I tried to not look at centers just because I want to have some faith in GMS. Yeah, GMS. yeah, for sure. Um, and then with offensive tackles, I, I don't think offensive tackle is going to be a position one. You signed Jermaine Elmanor, right? So I don't I don't think they're going to be splashing here, regardless of Evan Neal's success or lack of. But you got you mean you got to look at Spencer Brown, who you know Joe Shane was part of the you know the front office that drafted him. I need to really watch Spencer Brown because I don't have a strong opinion on him. So he might be someone I do an offseason watch of. Jedrick Wills could be like your perfect swing tackle at this point, right? It was a right tackle out of Alabama, switched to left tackle pretty flawlessly. He kind of peaked as a rookie, um, but like he could be that that swing tackle. Ta- like he could be like you know the best swing tackle in the NFL, but he could probably get a starting contract somewhere. Andrews Pete, not going to be probably not going to be a swing tackle, but he's a he's going to be a free agent, and he's from the Raiders. Carmen Brasillo connection. Isn't he the? Didn't they add him to repl- uh, replace Jermaine Eleanor? Because I thought he was on the Saints. He was on the Saints. You're right. Yeah, uh, but yeah, he's someone who's like been a, a, a good starter in the NFL for a long time. Um, I mean, do you have anything else on the offensive line? No, no. Um, I, I think Jermaine Eleanor is going to wind up starting at right tackle. Uh, at at some point this year, even though right now he's not slated to be slated to start at guard, but if there is a world where they have su- Jermaine Elamunor has success at guard, and for some reason there's no there's no world where Evan Neal is not successful at tackle, and then Elamunor just stays at guard. I think they're gonna move. I think they'll move off of Evan Neal there just by benching him. But who knows? Maybe. Maybe they just have Evan Neal somewhat struggle all through 2024 because they need Ella Mooner to play guard because they don't have any other guard. And now next year we're talking about how the Giants need a right tackle. Oh, Maybe. trust me. That's went through my head. There is nothing that's off the table with how this offensive line yeah. sh- uh, shuffles. I mean, they gets, keep Neal in there together. because they have to. <laughs> because they feel like they have to. Because uh, they don't Did have they any other guards. They put Josh Azudu at starting left tackle after no practice at it at all in training camp last year. I have no, I would not be surprised at all if that happens. Um, and then cut Tyree Phillips for Matt Parrott. And then they're like, when they needed that position, they're like, you know what? We don't want to put Matt Parrott out there. Uh, I, I'm kind of going a little bit and not in order of positions, but like in order of like where I could see big name splashes. Defensive tackle could be the splash position, right? It was really weak in 2022. They spent money on it last season and then lost, uh, you know, Leonard Williams and Ashawn Robinson. And there's a name that they're, they're pops. Kenny Clark from the Packers. He'll be 29. He's been like he's seventh in sacks, hits, and pressures la- uh, last year. 11th in 2022, fourth in 2021. He's really good. He's obviously an awesome run defender. It makes sense that he could free up. Now, Green Bay's in a healthy cap spot situation, so they won't be forced to do any of these decisions. They have to even play they, Jordan, uh, Jordan Love. Yeah, they have to play Jordan Love, but you know, we don't think that's going to be a front-loaded contract. Um, so that, But if, you get, hey, if Jordan Love gets franchise tagged, then maybe we could be in this position. But they have like the pieces to move on from a Kenny Clark and justify it, right? Devontae Wyatt had a stellar season in year two. Like, he, he's... I don't know why more people didn't talk about it, but he was awesome in year two. Rashawn Gary cap hit starts getting expensive in 2025. Lucas Van Ness could start to catch on and be a good player. Preston Smith is under contract for the next three years. They just gave out a contract to Xavier McKinney, another guy on the defense. That is someone who you say, oh, well, we're all paying Brian Burns. You're paying Dex. You got Kayvon. K- no, I, that is, I, I will, I have no problem having the highest paid defensive line in football. Right, like last year with the Commanders, and they're like, "Whoa, they can't pay Montez Sweat or Chase Young because they they're paying so much to Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne." And I was like, "Are you out of your damn mind? You're the Washington Commanders. Your team needs so much talent. You're talking about you don't want to. Oh well, we can't just we can't pay so many good players at defensive line something that will win you playoff games 
which will set you apart from other playoff teams if you get to that point. I have no problem. If Kenny Clark hits free agency, we look at all these names on this list, Justin, he's at the top for me. He like he is at the top unless mm. I convince myself of Dak Prescott. All right. There's another guy I, I have at the top, but uh no, Kenny Clark is awesome. And I I I love adding interior defensive linemen. I, I like I loved when we had the position of strength, when you had Leo, when you had Dexter. I was even on board of like towards the beginning of last year that of extending Leonard Williams. I just like the the idea of can you imagine if Leonard Williams was still here and you had Brian Burns too? That'd be tough financially. But Anyway, regardless, I, I think that's that's an awesome idea. Like I, Harrison Phillips is another guy too. He was a former Bill. I think the fact that like you see his 2022, it was good for the Vikings, and then his 2023 wasn't that great. And I think Harrison Phillips, I don't know how well he fits a Brian Flores defense, um, kind of similar to a Wink Martin Dill defense. I don't know how well he fits that. And I think if he has another iffy iffy year, maybe he hits the open market, doesn't get as much as he should. And then the Giants could possibly go out and get him because I think he could fit what um, what Shane Bone's trying to do. B.J. Hill is going to be a free agent, Bobby Skinner. Did you say Harrison Phillips? I did say Harrison Phillips. Okay, okay. yeah, I was going to say, okay, that was a Bills draft pick. will be 29. Um, he's he signed, like, reasonable deals. Uh, B.J. Hill, I thought, I, I thought about putting B.J. Hill, and I was like, you know what? Justin's going to put B.J. Hill on there. Um, Aleem McNeil from the Lions. Right again, another team that's going to start path and pay. Well, not start. They've already paid like you know a lot of the guys from their 2021 draft class. Ali McNeil hasn't got it yet. They did sign DJ Reader to this group this year. I think one of the most underrated signings of the offseason was DJ Reader to the Lions. Ali McNeil could be that uh, for the Giants, right? More of a run defender. If you want to go the opposite type of player, you've got Osa, uh, Odi, Digizua. Oh, Diggy Zua. I love him, uh, man. If you're, look, he's if a you're really looking good for player. the small, quick, penetrating defensive lineman to go with Dexter Lawrence, I mean, he's top 12 in the league for defensive tackle pass rush metrics. Yeah. And he gets tackles for losses in the run game. So that would be a nice, you know, piece to put in there, too. Yeah, I'm a big Osa fan. And, you know, he's only played, like last year, only, he only played 60% of the snaps. So, um, you know, you, and, I, and I can imagine that that's kind of the guy that you would want to add to this Giants pass rush, not a guy that's going to play 80% of the snaps, 70% of the snaps. But you want to add a guy that's going to be a nice rotational piece, and Osa Di Zua can be exactly that while giving you pretty, pretty solid production for your fourth best guy on your defensive line. So I'm all for of putting in a little bit of an investment this this upcoming year. Hopefully it doesn't bite us in the ass this year uh, with not having that interior defense alignment too next to Dex. That's awesome and that we feel confident in. But I think if we can make that position an absolute po- position of strength. I'm I'm totally a fan of that. Also from the Dallas Cowboys, Chauncey Golson, right uh, out of, out of Iowa, mm-hmm. like he actually had like the seventh best pass rush and win rate for defensive tackles in 2023, but only again only plays 30 percent of the snaps. So he's like a death pass rushing defensive tackle for that team. You could give him you know a you know a little chunk of change, but again that's the like you want to get a little more bargain uh, with it. Also T.J. Slayton, not very good. But he played really well versus the Giants in London, and I'm I'm giving him he's getting the name bump for that. Like played really well versus the Giants in London, uh, from the Packers, former second round pick. You are you are making the list this year because of that one game. Anybody else? I mean, yeah, I had Kenny Clark, Harrison Phillips, Ali McNeil, uh, uh, Odigizua, Austin Golson, Johnson, and T.J. Slayton. Austin Johnson will be on a void year, little reunion. Sebastian Joseph Day. He got cut last year, right? I'd be interested to see how he bounces back. You know, he guy. he was not he was not uh, with the Titans. He's he's on the Titans now. He was not with the Titans under Shane. He was Bowen. cut by the Chargers, I think. Yes, he was. And then even the 49ers brought him on for uh for for two games at the at the end of the regular season. Yeah, Rutgers. How about that? How do you like that? Let's talk about wide receivers. Now, you've got the old and doesn't make sense for us group of Stefan Diggs, Brandon Cooks, Keenan Allen, and DeAndre Hopkins, right? But it could make sense for another team. Let's say we live in a world where Jalen Hyatt doesn't develop, Justin. The Giants get a rookie QB. So resetting the, you know, the rookie QB wage scale, blah, blah, blah. And they decide that Slayton is too much for what he is. Amari Cooper will be 30 years old. 
right? Which is not over the hill, but you're getting close to the hill. The Browns have negative 52 million in cap uh, space next year and negative 10 million in 2026. I don't think I've ever seen that where two years down the road, they're in the <laughs> negative. He has over 2,400 yards the last two seasons and 32 games with bad quarterback play. You don't have to worry about injuries with him, right? Like he's only missed no. seven games in nine years, right? Every injury that he's had has been a minor one. Struggled a little bit last year, I think, but yeah. Yeah, he had the, he missed two games at the end of the regular season last year and then came back for the playoffs. You'd be able to pair Amari Cooper and Malik Neighbors for a young QB. I, I could get on board with that for a guy who doesn't miss games and is like one of the most consistent wide receivers out there and produces with bad quarterback play. So here's the thing. Here's here's one of these things that we're going to put a pin in and we're going to come back to. You think Darius Slayton's going to get more money on the open market than Amari Cooper? No. But okay. Amari Cooper's way better than Darius Slayton. Right. Well, you. Uh, I thought... I thought the line that you used was alluding to that. Decide that Slayton is too much for what he is, is was my line. Okay. All right. Because, Amar- dude, Amari Cooper is still really good. Really, really good. And what I, I think this would have, have to, be- to be, again, this would have to be with a rookie quarterback, right? This this would have to be with a rookie quarterback uh, for it to make sense. And I, I think Amari Cooper at this point has proven that he's almost QB proof where he's just going to help anybody be productive and help anybody be good. Dallas has to be, this is not talked about enough, Dallas has to be kicking themselves that they cut Amari Cooper. Yeah, it was a high cap hit at the time, but then you cut Amari Cooper, or you trade Amari Cooper. Traded him for like a six-round pick. Traded him for nothing, so didn't even cut. Traded him for nothing, um, basically, and then traded for Brandon Cooks, who, man, wouldn't you trade Amari Cooper for Brandon Cooks at, at, at this point? Um Man, they they you really got to be kicking you. That was a really bad move. Um, yeah, I I would be, I think I would be for that. I, if Amari Cooper can get through this year while continuing to kind of stay healthy, but that that would be an overpay. Like regardless of how good Amari Cooper is, I agree. But it would be a very much like, hey, let's help our rookie QB as much as we can. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Again, if you get a bridge quarterback, if you get Dak Prescott, if whatever, it only makes sense if you take a quarterback in the first round. And you just be able to pair Cooper and neighbors. And again, like it has to be in the like, hey, Jalen Hyatt doesn't develop. They don't want to bring back Slayton because he's getting sixteen million per year or something like that. Um, Deontay Johnson is a name, but if he's successful, then the Panthers are going to want to keep him. And there's rumors that he's a pain in the ass. Yeah, I wouldn't. Want and that. I think a twenty nine year old pain in the ass is more painful than a twenty five year old one. So, yep. But he is really good. And then I'm surprised. I I thought I Chris Godwin. He's gonna be twenty nine years old. And I thought maybe his production had fell off. No, he had 1,000 yards last year. He just turns out a 1,000-yard season after a 1,000-yard season. And he is someone that Brian Dable would absolutely love because he's so versatile and how you can move him around, how smart he is. Uh, I I was kind of shocked to see that he had 1,000 yards last season. Yeah. Uh, There's a lot of slot guys. Tyler Boyd, Godwin's a slot guy, but he has inside-outside. Tyler Boyd's been a slot guy for his basically for his career. He's with the Titans now. He's going to be a free agent. Um, you know, there's the bigger ones like Ayuk. Um, Elijah Moore is going to be a free agent. Well, he's excuse, yeah, like Justin Jefferson, Brandon Ayuk, and T Higgins. Like they're they're not hitting normal free agents, so I'm not going to mention them. Right. It is kind of crazy. Like the 2021 class, you have such great players. Like you got Jamar Chase, Jalen Waddle. Devontae Smith, Aron, Amon Ross St. Brown, Nico Collins. And then, like, next out of that class last year in receiving yards was Elijah Moore, Josh Palmer, and Tutu Atwell. Like, there's no middle ground yeah. um, in there, right? Like, those those were 6th, 7th, and 8th of receiving yards in that class. Um, Rondale Moore could be a fun piece, right? Rondale Moore, Rashad Bateman, I was right. Deami Brown, I was, uh, Brown, I was wrong. So we're just revisiting some draft takes with this wide receiver free, free, wide receiver free agency. Kadarius Tony's a free agent, Justin. Yeah, fifth year option declined. Who would have thought? Who would have thunk it? Who would have thought that the point I was making when I talked about like the winning trades is like, yeah, of course the Chiefs won the Super Bowl, but then we could, then we have to talk about how every single decision the Chiefs have made over the last four years was the correct decision, and the win would be if he's someone that you resign to a contract. Yeah. Uh, I put Jawan Jennings on the list, Justin, and he was signed an hour before you recorded. Yeah, he, I mean, I, I think that's somebody that I, I think any coach would 
freaking love because he's a really good blocker, really dependable on third down, um, and a dude that's just going to give you high-end effort. Um, and I think the fact that he is such an advantage on third down um, and being smart and getting open and getting separation kind of like when he needs it is so valuable. So uh, Jawan Jennings is one of my favorite players in the NFL, um, and there's no wonder why the 49ers now extended him and they too. got him. Um, I, I loved I loved him uh, coming out. I, I, I loved him for a different reason coming out of Tennessee because he was just like, oh, man, look at the contested catches that he makes, and he just makes some big-time plays. Maybe I did give him props for his blocking, and that's literally why he's so valuable for the 49ers. Um, I'm going to tell you two names that interest me that nobody's thinking of at wide receiver. Rashid Shahid. Ooh, I didn't even see him. He's a he's a they have him labeled as an RFA, but he's only signed for for one year with the Saints. Oh, I didn't look at any RFAs. Uh, but no, he's only like he doesn't have anything for 2025. It's just 2024. He has a cap hit of nine hundred eighty five thousand dollars, and then that's it. Um, yeah, restricted free agents. I just kind of view them as like you're gonna get signed, and if you're not, you're not wor- you're not you're a minimum player, right? But then even you ever heard of, you ever hear of Chris Moore? He's from the Saints too, right? No, uh, he was with a couple a couple teams. Uh, he's with the Arizona Cardinals right now. He's with the Titans last year, and then the Texans for two years before that. So he's been kind of like a journeyman. He even was with the Ravens for a while too. Had a year where he didn't have any catches, but his yak numbers are solid. His separation numbers, when he qualified for enough targets from 2022, is also good. And he had like an insane like yards per reception last year, an insane average up to target because I guarantee it was just Will Levis and maybe even Tannehill just chucking it up to him at some points with somewhat of an even high catch rate too. So Chris Moore is a wide receiver that I learned existed today. Um, he's already in his early 30s, but I think that's the type of wide receiver that the Giants may go after next year. And I'm also just extremely interested now that I looked at his numbers and I even looked at some of what he did with uh, Davis Mills uh, a couple years ago with the Texans, where it looks where it looked pretty good. I'm even interested to see. He's a backup wide receiver for the Cardinals right now. If he gets any run, I think he's going to look good. Boom. Chris Moore, you heard about him first. People say that line all the time, and it's not true. You actually did hear about him first here. Corners. Again, me and you are, are big fans of signing corners in free agency. Not the best-looking class, but there's a guy who he didn't have a great season. But I think he was legitimately awesome in 2022. Then last year, last year he got injured and he came back. And when he came back from the injury, he was just bad. And that was Tyson Campbell from the Jacks. You know, he allowed eight touchdowns last year. But, like, you look at the bad games that came when he came back from the injury. He is someone that will give up a play, but he also makes a ton. Like, he's this big outside corner. And I just really loved this game. I loved it coming out of college. I loved it in 22, uh, you know, watching him on the Jags. And he's just a lot of fun to watch. And he's a great run defender. He's physical. He plays with an edge. He's someone that I can see just talking football. I think he like in in uh in store for like a bounce back after last year being disappointed. And then uh and then his former te- his, his Georgia teammate Eric Stokes has he been good for the Packers? I remember like rookie season was pointing up, but I I honestly am not I don't know. super familiar with how well Eric Stokes has been playing because if he's been playing well, they're going to resign him. Eric um, Stokes. Michael Carter from the Jets had a really good year as a slot cornerback for them, but I don't know him specific as a player. But Campbell's the one that, like, I believe in Tyson Campbell as a player uh, a lot. Eric Stokes really hasn't played a lot over the last two years. He played 477 snaps last year and then only two games this year, week 15, week 16. So he's been injured. He's been not. That's my thinking, but it's kind of weird. Yeah, maybe he suffered an injury late in 2022. And then he just missed the entire year this year. And then just didn't play in the playoffs for them or even down the stretch. Weird. First round pick. He started 2023 on the pup list. How about that? That ain't good, Eric Stokes. No. Thought you were going to be better than that, bro. Maybe, uh, maybe try not getting hurt. Asante Samuel Jr. Staying with LA. Right? Yeah. AJ Terrell definitely staying with the Falcons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought about it, but again, it's someone that's staying with the Falcons. Brandon Stevens staying with the Ravens. Probably that too. But you know, the Ravens let guys go. So, but corner doesn't have the names that pop. Linebacker. 
Oh. I don't see us being a team that looks to pay two big money linebackers, Justin, but you have a, a big swing that you like. Jeremiah owosu Koromoa. JOK, for short. We talked about him a couple years ago. And I, I can't remember what necessarily our talking point was, but if I if I had to remember what mine was. He was on my top ten big board for the Giants that year. This guy's fun, but where where does he fit in the NFL? And credit to JOK where all of the exciting things that you saw at Notre Dame and even getting some like Isaiah Simmons light kind of... I think kinda... he fell in the draft because of Isaiah Simmons. Yeah, but lo and behold, Isaiah Simmons only could wish that he's JOK. Really? He could only wish. JOK is going to be an all-pro this year. Like I, that's, my, that's my big NFL take this year. Uh, I'm gonna pull up. I'll pull up his stats from last year because you look at it like Justin. What are you talking about, man? What are you talking about? Well, let's talk about it. 2023, 101 combined tackles, three and a half sacks, 20 tackles for loss, five QB hits, and he had an AV of 11. Six pass deflections as well. How many interceptions? Two. I think JOK going into year four is ready to really explode. Where in 2022 he only played 11 games. Last year he played in 16 games. Um, so if you add you add another game to that, you're going to get over 100 tackles. If you can get close to 10 QB hits, maybe get, I think, three and a half sacks is totally fine. Uh, get 20 tackles for loss, though, on 72 to- solo tackles is a crazy rate. I mean, that is a rate that sometimes you see guys out of, like, these major colleges that make you impressed and make your jaw drop to the floor. It's like, well, do you, he want one out of every five tackles is in the backfield. That is JOK. And if you just watched him in the playoffs, that's where it really stuck out because he changed football games, changed games down the stretch for the Cleveland Browns. So, it, like, I, that is a playmaker. I'm not thinking twice. He's an athlete. He's going to go and get it. He's going to be a dude, and he's going to be a really good pl- football player for the rest of his career. Um, and I think he's like the prototypical modern, like, what these modern teams look for, where it's like being this Mike linebacker without having like this tremendous size and being like this stereotypical slower guy. He matches what modern teams look for while also just being good and not just fast. All right, so I'm hoping we get JOK just so we can be like, hey, we finally got the – actually, we got we did get one big fish from this way too early pre-free yeah. agency preview. You're going to have to pay him, up. though. That's the thing, because Patrick Queen, who I don't – I didn't always view Patrick Queen as like this great football player. Um, That could be me just – I know he had a bad rookie year, so that could be – Well, he was bad being, until Roquan Smith showed up. So Patrick Queen did get seventeen million. You know he he got he signed a, a Queen, contract. He did make All Pro last year, right? So we'll see how. But JOK is going to get more. Like JOK is going to get twenty million a year. Oh, so that's okay. the thing. Like I, I that's mean, that's also my that's also my opinion. I could be wrong, okay. but I think he deserves it. Do you think Nick Bolton's going to get paid by the Chiefs? Most likely, you know he's someone that we like. <sighs> yeah. Do you know who's someone that's random? Again, this is like man watching you on film. Kazir White from the Cardinals, right? He hasn't had like the fast, you know, the most successful career. And I don't know what his market is, but I really like him, man. He's just fast and aggressive. Like he's been a safety in the past. Uh, yeah, and he had nine tackles for a loss in 11 games uh, last year for the Cardinals. On a, on a Cardinals defense that didn't really have anyone that popped, he was the guy that was popping out for them, right? Where he's just like fast downhill. This is this is someone that can make plays for you. Kazir White, right? And put him... Again, now that you have Bobby O'Carrick, it's like pairing some of these guys with him is a is a nice fit. Why don't you talk to us about something? Because I forgot that we didn't talk to us about something before. We talk about mm-hmm. some former Giants and some other stuff. Got a lot of too got a little too excited, but you want to know what I am equally as excited about? It's uh, the Dan Patrick partnership with John Boy Media. That's right, John Boy Media and iHeart Podcast. They've teamed up. That means two of your favorite John Boy Media shows can be found over on the Dan Patrick Show. Wake and Jake, Bobby and I have been on there a few times. And then Jimmy's Three Things. I've been have on joined. That. You've been on Jimmy's Three Things. I highly doubt that. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, his three I don't things so. that he cares about the most. Me, the company, and his kids. Katie did not make the list. And the best part, they'll still she continue to be the... the Katie's fourth? Sure. They'll still continue to... <laughs> doesn't make the Three Things show. They'll still continue to be the same shows you know and love. Nothing changes, but you want to know what's cool? If you go to iHeart Podcast and then you click on the Dan Patrick Show... All those other fancy shows, well, there are two of our shows are there. Jimmy's Three Things and Wake and Jake. If you go to tell we're really excited about this one, 
We couldn't do cool stuff like this if it wasn't for all of you listening. So thank you, and thanks to the Dan Patrick partnership, and thanks to Dan Patrick. You'll be glad you did. Thank you, Dan. We'll be glad you did. David Long Jr., man, my guy. Or not, sorry, David Long Sr. David Long Jr. is actually on the New York Giants. From the Dolphins, formerly the Titans, right? So someone who's done well with Shane Bowen. I've just been a big fan of his the past couple years as just a well-rounded linebacker. You know, he's a smaller guy and he has some missed tackles, but I, I really like him and next to Okereke. It'd be cool. And even in that like linebacker boom of 2023, he only signed for two years, $11 million. Like he got the cheapest deal out of all those guys. Um, he at one point was like a future former giant, right? Yeah. He, I mean, he, like when we knew that the Giants were signing a linebacker in 2023 free agency, he was on that list. Uh, Monty Rice, he was a draft crush who ended up going to yeah. the third round by the new Tennessee Titans. He didn't plan out for them. Also, Justin... Mr. Irrelevant, Grant Stewart from Houston, drafted by the Bucks. Grant Stewart from uh, Houston, drafted by the Bucks. Grant Stewart from Houston, drafted by the Bucks. He stinks, but Mr. Irrelevant had this mention of him. There's another linebacker who's a draft crush of mine that's going to be a free agent. Do you know who, who it is? Who would that be? Willie Gay Jr. He's just signed with the Saints. It was a one-year deal? Yep. That'd be interesting. That's a, that'd be a good one. Um, and he's play, he's been... I don't understand why the Chiefs... I guess because they have Leo Chanel, but Willie Gay Jr., He's been like a little up and down, but I really like, again, he's been like a huge, he was a huge part of like that Super Bowl team against the Eagles. Yep. So he's really good. And so we're getting to the positions where it's like, obviously we're not going to spend a lot of money. Safety. Jabril Peppers and Jeremy Chin are two guys who I think can be awesome role players for like good contracts. And also Joe Shane, Justin, he did an interview on NFL Network talking about the draft and talking about what he likes, likes guys. And when he talked about Newman, he's talking about like, he brought up interceptions and he's like, man, not a lot of guys are able to figure out how to get the ball in their hands type of stuff. Like that means something to me. Andre Cisco, the Jag safety. He's had seven interceptions the last two years, which again, like lives to the scouting report coming out of Syracuse, right? Out of Syracuse, it was like he had all these interceptions, but it's like he plays way too many chances. And the NFL, I think he's found a little more balance. Jags fans love him, Justin. And the Jags also are very weird in team building. Andre Cisco could be someone that they look to pair with Tyler Newbin, with you know, uh, with Jason Pinnock being a free agent. Also, Justin Demar Hamlin was a draft pick. People forget, or a Bills draft pick. People forget. Mm. You know, I would have thought that Javon Holland would have more ball production. But the Dolphins can't let Javon Holland go. I know they can't, but he's going to be a free agent, and he's very good. They just can't let him go, though. And also, the Giants probably won't pay him. Yeah, that's the thing. But I really like him. He's very good. Julian Love is going to be a free agent. I did think about saying his name. Just let's just like put every former giant on this list. Yeah, they they um, really should. Let, like, let's be real here for a second. They should just. Jabril Peppers wants to be back. He's on the Patriots now, so they can't. It's he not now. a great fit too. They can, he, go go get Jabril Peppers. He wants to he, be back. Be an amazing fit. Um, Edge. Anyone oh. with the semblance of a big name just doesn't make sense for the Giants. But Aziz will be a free agent. Boogie Basham will be a free agent. And you just have, like, no third guy at all. Rashad Weaver. Like, he was... For Shane Bowen, he was pretty productive in 2022. He had five sacks, nine QB hits, 20 pressures as a rotational guy. And he just saw his pre- playing time reduce a lot last year. Again, a guy I like coming out of the draft who went in the fourth round. Um... That could be someone that you use out there. He's not the most athletic guy, but he's someone who like knows how to win as a pass rusher, uh, and as a third guy, as you know, he could he could play the run fairly well too. That could be someone. And um, Joe Tryon. Why did the Bucks decline Joe Tryon's fifth year option? It doesn't make sense to me. I know he hasn't been great, but like he was thirty six in two thousand twenty two and sacks, hits, and pressures with a good pass rush win rate. He led the Bucks by a wide margin that year. And last year, he didn't have the same success. But, like, he lost playing time to Yaya Diaby. But I thought he was better than him. Obviously, Yaya Diaby's a rookie. So, you you know, you make take their, take that. But, like, Shaq Barrett's gone, right? If they, if you kept Shaq Barrett and had Shaq Barrett for another three years. But Shaq Barrett's gone now. I'm very He's surprised they declined the fifth-year option of Joe Tryon. I'm with you. With you. I also think we should say Kalevon Chasen on this episode every year until he's out of the NFL. Because I, I, this is an episode I go back and listen to every year to see if we got any guys. And we did say Kalevon Chasen. We're like, hey, he sucks, but hey, first-round pick and an athlete. He's had five sacks in four years, Justin. 
as a first round oh. pick. Jihad Yuck. Ward matched his career sack total last year. Man was <laughs> drafted as this speedy edge rusher in the first round, and he puts up Justin Ellis's numbers. Just didn't, just, just doesn't do anything though. That's the thing. <laughs> first round pick though. First round pick. Minimum contract. You gotta contract. do something. You gotta do something. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll run, teach him up. <laughs> running back. Travis whoa, Homer's whoa, 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 always. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. You didn't mention Lorenzo Carter. Oh, I didn't even see Lorenzo Carter. Lorenzo Carter's going to be a free agent. Um, I also like uh uh I keep on saying guys where I don't know necessarily fully know how to pronounce their names, but uh Dietrich Wise Jr. Dietrich Wise Jr. from the Patriots won a Super Bowl with them. Um he's a guy like he's gonna be thirty this year. So that's like, hey, if a guy that you know, he does not not a ten sack guy, had seven and a half sacks in two thousand twenty two, four and a half last year. Like an edge three, if you really kind of want to invest them a little bit. Also, I feel like we always say that edge rushers are going to get paid. Edge rushers are going to get paid. I think the NFL, unless it's like a top guy, I think the NFL is coming to an understanding that they're not really going to overpay for edge rushers anymore. Because usually it doesn't fully work when you overpay for these edge rushers that hit the open market, usually for a reason. Um, oh, oh, well, Demarcus Lawrence has void years coming up. Thank God. If they can I get thought about out. Demarcus Lawrence, but again, any, anyone with the semblance of a big name, I just don't see being... Well, no, like, I'm just saying this from the standpoint of maybe he won't be a fucking cowboy anymore. Because <laughs> he, he seems to he seems to not do... Uh, he has, He's had a pretty good year, but there was a time where he wasn't doing great, but then he would play the Giants and Eli, and then he would just have this resurgent comeback game. Uh, my God, yeah, they get one? like five sacks in the games versus the Giants, and uh, three in the other games. Yeah, then two. Yeah, remember that? I think it was 2022 against Evan Neal, the first, the first Dallas game. Uh, oh, where yeah. we, we were wearing those color rush jerseys. That was bad. Um, Kylan Farrell is going to be a free agent. Zayvon Collins is going to be a free agent. The the long lost uh, story of first round edge rushers, and uh, there was somebody else. Oh, Baron Browning. I really liked him from Ohio State. I had someone like get re like find me and like get really angry because I said like Barrett and Browning was a third round pick. He's like, You piece of shit. This this scumbag so stupid thinks he's not a first rounder. Baron Browning has five sacks and four and a half sacks the last two years. He's like a good efficiency guy. Yeah, it's not bad. Um running backs. We'll ten, finish only, off with running only in backs. ten games. Go ahead. Sorry. Finish off with running backs. Giants have Devin Singletary, again, who we identified last year. You drafted Tyrone Trace and Eric Gray. So you don't Think that they'll hit the market here, really? Travis Homer, uh, he's always going to get the Bobby Skinner 2019 mock draft mention. Rams running back, Boston Scott, he's going to be a free agent. Patrick Taylor, he's talented, but maybe really dumb, it seems. No offense. But I just remember doing preview for the Packers game, and he didn't get out of bounds when he clearly didn't get out of bounds. And then he did it versus the Giants, too. And Matt LaFleur took off his headset and looked like he was going to, like, like, Cock back to throw his headset in his face. <laughs> uh, we liked him coming out of Memphis. And then uh, say 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 the name that you you want to say. I mean, I was going to say Amir Abdullah. Amir Abdullah. There we go. I said I was going to say. I knew Bring you were going to say Amir Abdullah. Bring him home. And I just because I want to get this right, so I can say that we we talked about this guy. I'm just going to read five names: Ty Johnson from the Bills, Trey Sermon, Elijah Mitchell, Michael Carter. And you know what? I, I put James Robinson in there. Maybe he reunites with the Giants. Yeah. Uh, so what do you have for running back? Khalil Herbert. Too uh, much. Chuba Hubbard. Stinks. Who I don't think is very good, but he played the most snaps uh, last year. Um, And then there was a guy who I who didn't play at all last year. J.J. Taylor. Your boy. He's restricted my, free agent, though. M- my boy, who... Uh, I think I, he he needs more carries. He needs more attention. Can I tell you a fullback? I didn't put fullbacks on the list because this Guess table's what? pissing me off. Guess what? Patrick Ricard. Patrick Ricard is going to be a free agent. There's no way the Ravens let him go, but he's like the most fun weapon. He's also low, he's low key one of the best Brian weapons. Brian Dable wouldn't sign him for a minimum contract. No, he, he would. Just bring him in to full fullback, tight end. He can catch. Ca- He'll catch He'd two passes. He'd be the passes. swing tackle by the second OTA. Well, he could do it, too. That's the crazy thing. <laughs> He's a really good football player. So there you go. That's it for me. All right. That's the 2025 free agency. I'm looking forward to you guys enjoying this. I'm looking forward to myself. I'm saying this to, my, I'm saying this to myself in 2026, Bobby. Enjoy listening to this episode as you see which guys you got right, Bobby. All right. That's an episode. We'll be back next week. 
We'll see you then. Until then, let's go big blue.